Hey everyone, welcome to this CUBE conversation featuring Hex. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Today, excited to be joined by Barry McArdle, the CEO and co-founder at Hex. Barry, great to have you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, it's great to be here. Tell us a little bit about you, your background, about Hex, which I know is built to enable businesses to do more with data together, but give us that backstory. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have personally been a builder and user of data tools my entire career. Um, I've, you know, worked with every different type of data tool, done, uh, worked with many, many different data teams. And um, most notably, my co-founders and I spent many years working together to build data products at Palantir. And um, Hex in many ways is the product we always wish we had. Um, we had sort of always felt this pain point around uh, a lot of fragmentation and a lot of pain uh, for organizations that actually want to make value of all the data they're bringing together. You know, they're spending millions and millions of dollars on um, data storage, ETL, compute, um, hiring out whole data teams. They want to get a lot of value from that, but then the fragmentation of the actual tools that people are using every day um, and the lack of collaboration really winds up holding these folks back. So we started Hex based on that personal pain. And uh, I always like to say Hex is just the product I always wish I had. Um, and uh, it's exciting now to see a lot of other folks that um, uh, are finding value in that and uh, apparently had all the same, same pain points that we had. Excellent, the product you always had and now you have it because you created it. Talk a little bit about yes. some of the products under the offering. I say one of them is called Magic, so I thought that would be great to talk yeah. about that from an AI standpoint, but just give us kind of a lay down of the actual technologies. Yeah, so you can think of Hex as this sort of integrated um, workspace for, for data analytics. And you can go all the way from just asking like a quick query, like I'm just going to write some SQL and get the results set back and maybe build a chart, all the way up through building uh, a really complex sort of um, uh, notebook that's doing a deep dive analysis or building out a model around something. And then you can take that and actually publish it as an interactive report or dashboard that anyone can use. And so you can really kind of go end to end and this is in contrast to a lot of existing tooling where you have to jump between a bunch of different things to do anything. Um, and all of this is cloud-based. It's collaborative first, so it works like you know a modern productivity tool that you'd expect, like a, you know, think of a Google Doc or Figma or Notion. These are collaborative first. They're built for teams, and Hex is built in much the same way. And it allows data teams and the folks that they're interfacing with to um, all come together around uh, asking and answering questions of data, and uh, building knowledge. And then the magic features you mentioned um, are our AI powered augmentation features. And they're just built right into the product, right into the workflow. You know, a lot of people are excited about AI. A lot of people are using things like ChatGPT. Our philosophy with magic is let's bring, um, you know, these really world-class state-of-the-art LLM uh, uh, capabilities right into the product where people are already doing things. So you don't have to tab over to ChatGPT to paste a bunch of things in and leak all your data out or something. It works right in the product and uh, is really integrated. So if you're a, a data scientist or data analyst, you can ask uh, our magic features to help you generate, edit, explain, debug code right where you're working. And it um, really helps people work more efficiently, uh, more effectively and, and focus on the things humans are really great at, which is the creative aspect of work. You know, it's forming hypotheses, it's exploring ideas, uh, not like tracing down a missing parenthesis somewhere in a query um, or, you know, trying to look up the syntax or something you're trying to do, which is unfortunately how a lot of data practitioners spend their day. So um, uh, those features have been super well received and bringing AI into more parts of the workflow is a big focus of ours. So really uh, a massive improvement in productivity, efficiency, uh, collaboration, as you talked about. You know, right. we can't, every conversation we have, we talk about data, the data explosion is is real, we're yeah. living it. There's the proliferation of connected devices, some of the projections, even for next year, 2024, 2025, are crazy with the volumes of data, the number of connected devices, yeah. every business, has to be a data business. I always think whether it's my grocery store or an auto dealer, they have to be. So with that context, describe some of the hard problems Hex is trying to solve for, for those data analysts, those data scientists. Um, yeah, well, you're right on Lisa. I think um, these these uh, organizations are bringing a lot of data together. They're, they know in, in inherently, and it's been a thing that people have talked about for you know a decade now, of like every business is going to become a data business. Data is the new oil, right? It's all these things people say. And, and people have responded to that by, by kind of hoarding data, right? They've, they've deployed data warehouses and data leaks and brought all this data together. And I think a lot of organizations are now in this point where it's kind of like, all right, so what? Are we getting value from this? Is this actually useful for us day to day to make better decisions? 
And there's a bunch of things sort of at that um, usage and collaboration layer that are really holding people back. So I mentioned that fragmentation. I think that's a big problem. I think it makes individuals less productive. You have to jump between one tool to write some SQL and another tool to work with something in Python. And then you're jumping over to this other place to build it into a dashboard. And then a lot of things are honestly just winding up back in spreadsheets. Um, and that holds individuals back, but it also makes collaboration really hard. Like things are living in a bunch of different places and you wind up with this sort of siloing or balkanization of workflows and users based on sort of arbitrary technicality levels. You'll see like the business analysts live over here, over here, the data analysts live over here, the data scientists live here, the ML engineers live over here. We think that's kind of insane. Uh, we think that's pretty broken. And uh, again, with Hex, we've tried to build this really integrated set of workflows that uh, bring everyone together around this. And um, uh, we see also, you know, again, this opportunity now to bring AI into these workflows and and allow people to even give deeper insight out of this. I think AI can allow you to go and, and um, one of our customers I was talking to, the, one of the users there recently, was talking about the um, our, our magic AI features. They said that they're trying things that they weren't trying before. Like they are more ambitious in the types of projects that they are taking on because they have this assistant that can help them do more complex and sophisticated things. And that is awesome for me to hear because that is sort of the ultimate ambition I think we've always had of like, how can you help these organizations do more with data? How can you empower individuals to do more interesting and deeper and more impactful work? Like that's that's pretty awesome. And I think that's sort of our ultimate vision of how more organizations can become really, really data driven. Um, in the future. I love that, that I, you know, we, we talk a lot about key benefits of solutions and ambition isn't one that I normally hear, but it's so important because, <laughs> you know, we talk about unlocking the value of data or freeing up data analysts, data scientists to be able to really focus on key projects, let the business analysts do their work. But the ambition, that's a cultural impact that you guys are having. It sounds like also from a business and a, and a technical perspective, that collaboration is, is facilitated. But what you guys are, are really enabling organizations to do is, is unlock the value of, of cultural change, which is not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do. And um, I, I think a lot of companies, their their culture around data is, is this sort of thing where you have a small group of like these high priests that are the really high end data, you know, data scientists, ML engineers. And, and these folks are great. I, 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 I come from that cloth, like, uh, uh, but I, I think organizations ultimately get very limited in that um, those are the only folks in an organization who can take on really interesting data challenges. And um, I think there's a very interesting opportunity we have to sort of allow more people to be participants in these data workflows. And I don't mean that everyone in an organization is going to learn Python overnight and become a hardcore data scientist. I mean, that, that actually would not be a good use of everyone's time. In some ways, bringing everyone together around these things even just means making it easier for the data teams to collaborate with their stakeholders, um, making it easier to actually share an insight. You know, one, one thing we see at a lot of customers is, you know, the data team will come up with something really interesting and they'll develop it in like a Python notebook or a script and they'll wind up, you know, sharing via a screenshot of a chart and a PDF of a deck that's sent in an email that's lost in someone's inbox. And then, you know, the stakeholder maybe opens it up and looks at the chart and they go, oh, I wonder what it would look like if it was, you know, this instead. And they email the data practitioner back and then it takes another week to get the new screenshot of the chart and the PDF of the deck and the email. And, you know, I think if you just think about that lag time and that feedback cycle, just culturally, of course, you're going to have trouble making an organization feel really data driven. Like, of course, that stakeholder is going to have a lot of trouble incorporating data insights into their decisions. And with Hex, you sort of collapse that all down and you go, hey, actually, the data practitioner can quickly hit publish, share someone on something. They're able to go and, and just look at it and actually adjust a parameter, or tweak it and see it in a different way or comment right there to the data practitioner, actually have a conversation in context with the data. The data practitioner could publish a new version of it and quickly update it. Like that type of tightening that feedback loop um, is awesome. And, and, and um, you're mentioning the cultural shift. I think that's a big part of it. How can you help connect those insights directly to the decisions that people are trying to make every day? Yeah. Uh, at some level, that is the sort of fundamental mission we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, it's connecting those insights is critical for organizations to really be able yeah. to use the, the data 
val uh, for, for the value that it can deliver because of course it's all about the customer experience regardless of the business and every customer has the expectation that the experience is going to be tailored it's going to be spot on it's going to be personalized relevant etc walk me through the how you mentioned data fragmentation for data teams limitation of bi tools walk me through the how of how hex is actually solving these issues that the data protectionists are facing well i think it starts with um our philosophy from a product perspective of um, really trying to build an integrated platform with a low floor and a high ceiling. And what I mean by that is a, a product that is accessible for folks to walk up and just start using it. And um, you know, most, most traditional data science tooling, like step one to using it is like learn computers. Like you'd have to like install a local Python environment, figure out how to use a notebook, and you'd have to write all the syntax in pandas and good luck trying to to have a SQL query in there. First, you have to figure out how to roll a database connection, and I could go on. It's really gross. And like a lot of people get through those steps, but like a lot more people don't. <laughs> and so a product that um, is sort of much more welcoming and inviting and intuitive for a bigger population of people, or even those, those folks who are using data tools today, just find Hex to be much more accessible and easier to use, much lower friction and overhead. So I think that's a sort of low floor. Like you want to just have the product feel really easy to just get started in. And then the high ceiling is not limiting people arbitrarily. And there's a, a lot of tools over time that have sort of been like, you know, pure no code tools. And, and we have a bunch of no code features and hacks. It's great for that lowering the floor effect. But um, the problem is that people pop out on that pretty quick. And then that's that tool fragmentation thing. Then you have another tool that's the next level of technicality, another tool that's the next level of technicality. And we think that we can have a product that can actually bring people together uh, no matter where they're, what they're doing project-wise. And that's not even just different personas, but sometimes an individual user actually has different tasks they might be trying to do that might call for different capabilities or languages or compute environments. They shouldn't have to jump around between different things to do that. So I think that's one really big thing from an approach perspective that we took on early philosophically. I think also just like building for modern software assumptions, honestly, like having something be based in the cloud, having something be collaborative first, having something that starts to incorporate the latest advancements in AI directly into the workflow. Um, I, we think bringing these sort of really cutting edge software capabilities to these data workflows that candidly have kind of languished. Um, you look at a lot of data tools out there that people use every day. They've been around for decades, in some cases, literally decades. And um, we think taking a fresh approach to these things that takes advantage of the latest, whether it's modern compute environments and uh, or collaboration features or AI is um, uh, a big part of our um, value prop. So uh, in that value prop, you, you talked about some of the of the key unique elements. When you're in customer conversations or conversations with, with prospects, you're comparing and contrasting traditional data tools that like you said, have been around for decades versus Hex. What are like the top couple of differentiators that come to mind that customers go, ah, I get it. I think the one thing that has really always stood out for folks is um, when you're working in a hex project, you can mix, uh, it's almost like mixed media in art. It's like you can mix different um, languages and different paradigms together. So you might start your project with an SQL query to pull some data from a database. And then you may actually just insert some Python because you want to then take it and project it or transform it differently. And then you can add a no code chart to take that data and then visualize it. And then you may point and click in that chart to drill down to a, a filtered data frame that then you can work again with in SQL or Python and on and on. You can mix and match these things however you want. And that is, uh, might sound obvious, but uh, <laughs> um, was the type of thing that is effectively impossible to do in most other tools and uh, is actually slightly hard to do technically. Like you have to get some things really right in terms of how you're doing compute, how you're thinking about your UI frameworks, um, even how you make that obvious and intuitive for users. There's a lot there. And so we, um, th that's something that I think when people start using the product, it just immediately clicks. And I think the big aha moment for a lot of folks come when they hit share, they hit publish, and they share their work with someone else in a way that they're able to just use and interact with. And again, that, that might sound obvious, but that is not the way data tools were historically built. And so um, that sort of integrated seamless workflow where I think the like, it just works is the affect that a lot of people get. And that um, uh, uh, really stands out. And I think has, has always been something that when people start using the product, it's very obvious how it differentiates from other uh, things they might've used in the past. 
It just works. I love that. So where can the audience go to learn more about Hex? Because I know they're going to want to. Our website is hex.tech. Um, you can check out a demo. You can sign up for a trial. You can uh, even check out our careers page for hiring. Um, so, uh, uh, but we'd love to love to see you in the product and love uh, any feedback or um, uh, thoughts from folks who get a chance to kick the tires. Excellent. Hex.tech. Barry McCardle, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE as part of this CUBE conversation and sharing Thanks with us me. about Hex, what you guys are doing and why and the impact that you're making. We really appreciate your time. It's a pleasure. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching and remind you to keep it right here for more action on theCUBE, your leader in hybrid tech event coverage.